Elizabeth Kubler-Ross states that the five stages of grief are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. As the grief-stricken, we believe that we must model through each stage to get to that magical point when everything is back to normal. Except normal doesn't exist anymore. There's a realization that we cannot go back. But how can we learn to cope and to move forward? In The Sky is Everywhere by Jandy Nelson, Lenny, her grandmother, and her uncle Big are having troubles remembering what normal feels like after the sudden passing of her sister Bailey. Daily life becomes a difficult task and going through its motions, a monumental chore. Trudging through the stages of grief, Lenny believes they are all going a little mad. The Sky is Everywhere by Jandy Nelson. School's been out for two weeks now. Graham, Big, and I are sure to be out of our trees. Exhibit A, Graham's following me around the house with a teapot. The pot is full. I can see the steam coming up from the spout. She has two mugs in her other hand. Tea is what Graham and I used to do before. We sit around the kitchen table in the late afternoons and drink tea and talk before the others came home. But I don't want to have tea with Graham anymore because I don't feel like talking. Which she knows, but still hasn't accepted. So, she's followed me up the stairs and is now standing in the doorway of the sanctum, pot in hand. I flop onto my bed, pick up a book, and pretend to read. I don't want any tea, Graham, I say, looking up from Wuthering Heights, which I know is upside down and hope she doesn't. Her face falls, epically. Fine, 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 she chants, taking another sip. She's been following me around like this since the start of summer. Normally, summer's her busiest time as garden guru, but she's told all of her clients that she's on hiatus until the fall. So, instead of guruing, she happens into Maria's while I'm at the deli or into the library while I'm on my break, or she tells me the flying man's and paces on the path while I float on my back and let my tears spill into the water. But tea time is the worst. Sweet pea, it's not healthy. Her voice has melted into familiar river of worry. I think she's talking about my remoteness. When I glance over at her, I realize it's the other thing. She's staring at Bailey's dresser, the gum wrappers strewn about, the hairbrush with a web of her black hair woven through the teeth. I watch her gaze drifting around the room to Bailey's dresses thrown over the back of her desk chair, the towel flung over her bedpost, Bailey's laundry basket still piled, piled over with her dirty clothes. Let's just pack up a few things. I told you I'll do it, I whisper, so I don't scream at the top of my lungs. I'll do it, Graham, if you stop stalking me and leave me alone. Okay, Lenny. I don't have to look up to know I've hurt her. When I do look up, she's gone. Instantly, I want to run after her, take the teapot from her, pour myself a mug, and just join her. Just spill every thought I'm having and every feeling I'm having. But I don't. I hear the shower turn on. Graham spent an inordinate amount of time in the shower now, and I know this is because she thinks she can try to cry under the spray without Big and me hearing. We hear. Exhibit B. I roll onto my back, and before long, I'm holding my pillow in my arms and kissing it in the air with an embarrassing amount of passion. Not again, I think. What 
What's wrong with me? What kind of girl wants to kiss every guy at a funeral? What's the mall guy in tree after making out with her dead sister's boyfriend the previous night? Speaking of which, what kind of girl makes out with her dead sister's boyfriend, period? Let me just unsubscribe to my own mind already, because I don't get any of it. I hardly ever thought about sex before, much less did anything about it. Three boys at three parties in four years. Casey Miller, who tasted like hot dogs. Dance Rosenkratz, who dug around in my shirt like he was reaching for a bite of popcorn at the movies. And Jasper Stoltz in eighth grade, because my friend Sarah dragged me into the game of spin the bottle. Total flopfish feeling inside of me each time. Nothing like Heathcliff and Kathy. Like Lady Chatterall and Oliver Mellors. Like Mr. Darcy and Elizabeth Bennet. Now I've gone mental. Kissing everything I can get my lips on. Always imagining the one person I should not be imagining. The person I promised my sister I will never kiss again. The one person who makes me feel a little less afraid. The front door slams shut, jarring me out of Toby's forbidding arms. It's big. Exhibit C. I hear him stomp straight into the dining room where only two days ago he unveiled his pyramids. This is always a bad sign. He built them years ago based on some hidden mathematics and the geometry of the Egyptian pyramids. According to Vig, his pyramids have extraordinary properties. He's always believed his replicas would be able to prolong the life of cut flowers and fruits, even revive bugs, all of which he would place under them for ongoing study. During his pyramid spells, Big Bailey and I would spend hours searching in the house for dead spiders or flies, and then each morning we'd run into the pyramids hoping to find a witness to resurrection. We never did. This time, He's at it with a fervor. Sure, it'll work. Certain that he only failed before because he forgot an, electro an electrical charred coil, which is now placed under each pyramid. A little while later, a stone big drifts past my open door. He's been smoking so much weed that when he's home, he seems to hover above Grand Lai like an enormous balloon. Every time I come upon him, I want to tie him to a chair. He backtracks, lingers in my doorway for a moment. I'm going to add a few dead moths tomorrow, he says, as if I'm picking up on a conversation that he's been her we've been having. I nod. Good idea. He nods back then floats off to his room, and most likely right out the window. This is us. Two months and counting. Booby Hatch Central. <laughs>